Welcome to the first Starter Girls podcast of 2021 with your host, Jennifer Loading and Brianna Drellis. And we are the Stata Girls. Amen. And we are super excited that you are here where extraordinary decisions produce extraordinary results. These are our friends. These are your friends. And they are living the extraordinary. This episode is brought to you by Walt Mills Photographer of Glad Models Agency. If you are here in the Dallas or surrounding area looking for some photography work, check out Walt Mills. You can learn more about him and his work at photosbywalt.com. All right. We got to start things off so we can get this like energy flowing in here today is a great day to be brave you might as well start now you have the power to change your circumstances any day you decide let today be that day rise up be amazing be you do you all right my friends i am super excited because this is like our very first episode with brianna and i co-hosting together and if you've been following starter girls you know she's been a guest on the show twice back in february and then just a few weeks ago and that means you probably saw our last episode for 2020 and she was featured at the very end of that episode so we are super excited to yes. have you be a part of Starter Girls. I'm just super thrilled. I'm super thrilled. I'm, I'm excited to be here. I Obviously, you know I love the mission of Starter Girls, and um, I just can't wait to showcase stories and inspire and empower others to keep kicking butt in life. That's right. We're going to get Brianna more involved in this podcast as she gets familiar with everything we're doing here, but I'm super thrilled to have you here. I think you're just going to be a great, amazing powerhouse asset to starter girls and the mission and empowerment of what we're doing for women and so we're so glad that you're here a part of it so with that we do want to get our guest on because she too is a powerhouse and i'm super excited to get her on the show tiffany mahan is the founder of modest muse org a nonprofit organization focused on women's empowerment she also has invested in multiple markets such as taste agaya which we're going to have her talk about a health and nutrition bar in downtown dallas commercial real estate and more to help build an empire for women to excel. Her mission is to make change and unify the community. At the young age, get this guys, of 25, Tiffany's focus is on inspiring by providing a blueprint to success while paving the way for new, I love this, entrepreneurship faces. I almost can't even say that, entrepreneurship faces. So welcome to the Starter Girls podcast, Tiffany. We're super excited to have you here. Yay. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited. And not only that, to be the first one on the 2021 show, right? Starting the year right. That's definitely what we're doing. You know, I'm just, it's amazing. I 2020 definitely like threw us for some hurdles, but 2021 is going to be that year that, you know, execution and just, you know, the blueprint and the foundation is laid and it's time, you know, it's time to make that positive impact, especially with everything that's going on. So I'm excited. I love it. I'm very I love grateful. It. Thank you. We're grateful to have you here today. So, Brianna, just jump in whenever you feel like you need to jump in and talk, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, we're, we're so happy to have you. And, uh, you know, what you just said as far as taking 2021 by the horns almost, right? It, it's yeah. it's out of a necessity, right? It's time to just rise up. And Jennifer talks about that all the time. And it sounds like that's exactly what you're doing. So we're excited to have you. Absolutely. Thank you. So, Tiffany, I want to start off. I want you to tell us a little bit about your organization because I think that's the important thing. You've got a lot going on at such a young age. I'm just, I'm absolutely, I guess, impressed because I think so many young people are rising up now and doing such great things. And you're certainly one of those people that, you know, have raised the bar. But not only are you doing one thing, you're doing like multiple things. So take us a little bit through this, what this Modest Muse Org is. And so you can share with our audience, audience what this is all about. Yeah, so Modest Muse, that's my passion. You know, when people think, hey, I need to find my purpose and my passion, what is that? Um, Modest Muse is an investment community for women. I definitely developed it after, you know, due to my testimony. Um, and I'll kind of get there a little bit and brush on that in a second. But I created it for women to just empower, inspire, and motivate each other to just, you know, go after their dreams. And, you know, I've always been the woman of resources, so I wanted to make my resources accessible to the community. So I created, literally, I have 20 different committee members who all serve in different ways, from chiropractic, from um, holistic wellness practitioners, from mental health specialists, um, counselors. And then we also have women in the business development aspect of things, so logo developers, website developers. Um social media managers, um, literally all things marketing, all things healing. Because, you know, in order for you to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to one heal. Because, you know, once you start a business, it it's a journey. You know, you're dealing with a lot of risk. You're dealing with just having to find some sort of faith or something to dive deep in to make sure that you're able to pursue your mission. So I wanted to make sure that we nailed, 
healing first because a lot of women, you know, trauma, we deal with so much as powerful women in the community that, you know, kind of gets overlooked. And we kind of glorify all the glamour versus like focusing on what we had to go through to propel us to the next level. So I created Modest Muse in order for us to just come together collaboratively, you know? So one of our core values is collaboration over competition, focusing on working together versus competing because as women, you know, it can get a little catty sometimes, but I wanted to make an environment where we learn, you know, in order for us to grow, we have to work together. And that goes into our next core value, which is inclusiveness, you know, bringing everybody together in order to understand each other. You know, there's a lot of people tend to go into their own little lanes, you know, but I've always been the type to want everybody from every race, economic background, social status, whatever it is, I was like, we will be stronger if we all work together. And I've seen it. So, you know, I brought women in from all different backgrounds just to come together and, you know, share their resources. And they were able to realize that we have a lot more in common than we think. So Modest Muse is a nonprofit. Um, Every single one of my events, you know, because when you think of a nonprofit, you think of one goal, Um, whether it's breast cancer, whether it's cancer in general, you know, autism, things like that. I kind of looked at it and I was like, we go through so many different things in our lives that it's not fair to just tackle one thing. You know, we have to be diverse, whether it's parenting issues, um, you know, just where you came from, whether it's literally domestic abuse, um, just there's so many different things that as women we deal with. And I wanted to make sure that we covered all platforms. So each woman comes in and they're like, hey, Tiff, you know, I'm going through domestic abuse this month. That's kind of a little bit of my story as well. Um, I do an event and I do an event or I do some sort of workshop or something just to focus on that suicide as well. That's something that's huge to me. And each one of our events that we host is a charitable initiative. So, you know, we started out the new year. Um, I launched last year, January 12th, and we sold out every event over a hundred people. And the first one was a Genesis Women's shelter. We went in and found out exactly what the women and the children need needed in the homes. And we went and donated those. Then we did a Brent's Cancer Initiative um, last month where we donated funds to, you know, women who were struggling from breast cancer. Um, We did virtual learning initiative. Um, Every single month, I try to, like, focus on a different goal so that we're spreading awareness to everything that we're going through. Because, you know, we don't fight one battle. We're literally fighting multiple battles, whether it's depression, um, anxiety, just we're so versatile in so many different ways that I wanted to make sure that we hit every subject. And that's what I wanted was a safe space for women to come together, learn from each other and grow. You know, that's the number one thing is growth. I wanted to produce a space that people would come and they would learn something and they would leave with something, you know, and leave with something more than just monetary value, but something that was healing them or something that's allowing them to feel whole within. So, you know, That's kind of a little bit about Modest Muse. Um, I share my testimony, actually. I moved to Dallas maybe a year and a half ago um, with, actually, no, two years now. I always think a year and a half, but it's been two years with absolutely nothing. I was previously engaged to an NFL player. I lived the NFL lifestyle for a while, um, entertainment industry. Like, you know, I did Wild and Out for a little bit. Literally saw the industry that women thrive to be a part of as a completely different from a completely different point of view. And I was like, women need to know what's really going on. You know, like social media, Instagram, it looks so beautiful, but they're not understanding that I'm going through depression on the low. They didn't know that I was literally battling anxiety. I was battling, you know, domestic abuse from both parties and things like that. And it was just, it was a lie. And I wanted to tell the truth. And I wanted more women to be more vulnerable in telling the truth on what they go through in order to heal and empower and inspire other women around us. Because you never know what your story can do for somebody else around you. So, you know, that's kind of what we do. Every single month, we tackle some a different goal, different objective. My girls are starting workshops next month where you can get a mental health workshop. You can get a budgeting and finances workshop. You can literally get um, strategy and structure Um literally social media management workshop. I've also learned how to, you know, file for your LLC DBAs. And I want to make the process for just being a woman easier and, and empower at the same time. So that's a little bit about Modest Muse. You know, that's, that's what I'm passionate about. I love to help others and I love to see the smile in others' faces. You know, it, when people speak of fullness on Thanksgiving, I speak of it from 
full by seeing the smiles in other people's faces. You know, it's way beyond the food. It's way beyond, you know, it's really just that healing. That healing is something that the community needs to really like dive deeper into. Because if not, we're going to continue to fail as a community. So. Yeah, this is so good. Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty yeah. interesting that your nonprofit supports other nonprofits. So it's like exactly what we were talking about at the top, that collaboration aspect. Because typically as a nonprofit, your focus is to create funds for your nonprofit. But you're actually creating awareness uh, in addition to other nonprofits, like you just said, Genesis Shelter and you know, others as well. So that's, that's pretty remarkable. Yeah. And well, and the thing that stuck out in my mind, Tiffany, that I really love is this whole health, body health that, and the whole aspect, because not only is she building, helping women build like a financial future, like getting them out into the workforce or whatever, helping them create things. But she's also talking about this whole getting them healed before mm-hmm. they even get to this. And this is so much of what I, gosh, it like, I yeah. love it. It resonates with me because I am so about that, you know, having come from, the the industry that I was in prior to what I'm doing now so much of what I talk about is that when I was working with women and I was helping them create like how how to help them create a business it was so hard to teach them how to do this when they weren't mentally right to do this that's right and so I am so much about the whole body health fixing the headspace all of that that mindset and really getting them strong and powerful so that they can put themselves out there with that confidence so I love it Tiffany I love what you're doing yeah 100 percent And I would also say, I mean, as a 25-year-old, for you to have the wisdom to, to, and the vision, right? So it's really, it's really incredible. So thank you for everything that you're doing um, with Modest Muse and and everything else. I mean, it's, it's awesome. So excited for you. And also like you are, you are impacting others and you are spreading, uh, you're using your gifts to spread light, to spread love, to, to, like you said, empower others, empower women. And that's obviously something that's real important to us at Starter Girls as well. 100%. I got chills like talking yeah. about this right now. Like you just, <laughs> she's like speaking my language. I love it. I know Brianna shares that with me because it's like this is so much of what we're all about. And I think as women, so many women don't really ever get that. And they're looking for that space to have that empowerment. You know, I talk about my industry. I was fortunately blessed to have incredible mentors for a very long time. So I had people pouring belief in me when I didn't have it, you know, lot, many years. <laughs> Took a lot, a lot to work on my head. But I think what you're doing is such an empowerful thing. And I, I love that you have that ability to create that impact and make a difference. And, and to, like you said, just the wisdom to be so young and to see that vision. Incredible. Yeah. I love it. I'm just it, lost. <laughs> And, you know, just like you guys said, the whole collaboration aspect of things. So each one of my events, too, I normally collaborate with another organization who may not get as much exposure, you know, because my ability to pack out events and being new to Dallas, it was like, all right, some people need, you know, to focus in on certain organizations and stuff a little bit more. So I want to bring awareness, you know, because there's no such thing as competition. When you have a gift, it's your gift. And I tell that to all of my ladies, you know. If it's meant for you, it's meant for you. You focus in and you tune in on it and it's going to work out for you. Like there is no other boutique in the world who will ever have the power that you that you are like blessed to have. You know, yeah. just stay consistent and just stay motivated and believe in your mission. And we're here to serve it. So Yeah, and I think that what you're what I'm hearing is the the scarcity min- mindset goes away because like you said yeah. you have your gift and you know what you're good at doing. There is no competition. Really, there yeah. isn't. There's room for everybody at the top if they want it. it. There's enough money out here for everybody to make it. <laughs> That's right. So. I got to tell you, last night I'm at a, a dinner table with my husband and my daughter who's 15 and another like a senior in high school who's another like she's a hardcore like she wants to be a lawyer like she's a go getter. And we're having these debates at the table. And my husband literally tells these girls, this 15 year old, and this 18 year old, like, Thank goodness for you girls, because you're going to rise up and you're going to be making change and all this. But he said, but women don't like to work together. Mm. Women are competitors with one another and they don't play nice. So Mm. I love this message because, first of all, my daughter needs to hear it. And, And it's something that, you know, I was like telling my husband, I'm like, well, hold on, because I can tell you about 10 women that I collaborate with and, you know, but it, it is rare. So, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that working with women is really easy because right. there are a lot of women out there who are not down with it, who are not open yeah. to it. So 
I do believe it's a very powerful and positive message that you're sharing uh, as far as the, you know, collaboration over competition. And I know that that resonates with a lot of women, but, you know, I still hear women say that and, yeah. and I don't know that they mean it, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And I that's why I want to create that space. So you mean it and you're walking in it because Modest Muse is not going to be anything but it, you know? And that's why even when women do come, like I said, the cattiness. And they do feel a way or intimidated by anything. I always remind them that, you know, your gift is your gift. Like, it's always going to be your gift. There's no woman in this world who can come and take that from you. If anything, that woman could help propel you to the next level. You know, if we work together, if women really work together, we would be so powerful. And I don't think we even realize it, you know, if we put all of the insecurities, because that's what I focus on a lot, you know, a lot of the problems within the women, like organization stuff are insecurities within ourselves that we have to heal from at first. Because if you do not heal from that, you're always going to be jealous, you're always mm -hmm. going to feel a way about another woman, like, you know, just advancing in life, and you feel like you're not and then also understanding the timeline of things, you know, there is no such thing as age. There is no such thing as, you know, things like that. Like, you know, Modest Muse has different races, different age groups. Like we go all the way up to women in our 50s because there's something that we can learn from everybody. And as long as we're yeah. willing and understanding to learn, we're amazing. And we are so powerful when we can work together. So that's why I'm just, you know, I just always push for encouraging and love. And that's what Modest Muse is built on is just love and encouragement. So. so good, yes. so good. We're all excited now. We're gonna be right. We're we're, we're gonna be like right out of here. Yes. All right. So I want to ask. I want to ask you another question because you got multiple things going on. You're just you are clearly an achiever. Clearly like going after things. Love success. And and I, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's very impressive. And and I just I really love that you've taken this success and and created this whole charitable thing on the side too. So you're you're kind of well rounded. But what I want to ask you is kind of a mindset question because this is probably my favorite thing. I'm all about mindset. Having done all these things, I want to know what does this process look like for you at this age where you are when you are going after something? Tell me what this looks like. My faith is like beyond anything. You know, a lot of people can talk on meditation. A lot of people can talk about self-love and self-care. But honestly, I couldn't get here without God. Um, you know, and this is coming from someone who was not a believer for a very long period of my time, you know, um, I just, it's, I can't explain my story without putting God at its foundation. You know, um, every single morning I'm waking up, I read the word. Um, I make sure that I'm just diving deep and I'm reading positive affirmations. I'm making sure I just continue to keep myself held high because it's going to come with drama. It's going to come with people who are trying to attack you. You know, the enemy is going to try to bring you down when you're doing something great for other people. So, you know, just my faith, really diving deep into the word. That's what keeps me motivated. That's what keeps my mind sane. You know, when it speak of it, love is patient, love is kind, love is compassionate. You know, I really focus on that because if I don't focus on that, I'll lose track of what's really going on. So anytime I even feel like, all right, so if you're being a little too business savvy today, remember to be compassionate, remember to be kind, like love people the way that God will love people. Because if you understand the word and you understand how God loved people, it was not to hurt anyone. It was to literally build a better lifestyle for those to live. And, you know, coming from someone who completely was lost majority of my life, I speak from like a healed place. Like, you know, you kind of spoke on your daughter being, um, you know, lawyer and dreams like that. So that was my ultimate dream. Um, I actually have a criminal justice degree and my goal was to go to law school right out of college. But unfortunately, um, I had to deal with some arrests, um, you know, to deal with my whole NFL career lifestyle thing. Um, and it completely brought me down. And I was like, all right, Tiff, what do you do next? You know, like, what is it that God wants for you? And then that's when I came around all these women and all these women were like, oh my gosh, we all need help. And you're like a light to me and, you know, your words speak to me. And then that's kind of what happened. So my faith, writing things down, um, making sure that when you write something down, you're able to execute, you know, because a thought is only a thought. But once you write it down, it's now a plan. So once you have it as a plan, make sure that you do all the strategy and everything to make it happen and, you know, go after it, remain consistent and just have faith that no matter what you do, as long as you're serving your purpose and you're serving your mission, it's going to happen. 
you know, and yeah. as long as there's the right heart behind it, because it takes that too. That's awesome. So good. I love the faith part. I really, I, yeah, and, I, and the vision. I'm hearing vision. I, just ha- keeping clear about where your purpose is. Yeah. So, so good. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So good. So good. All right. So much fun. So let's do a success. I think we need to talk about that. How do you define success, Tiffany? What does that look like to you? You said a lot of good things. So I think you've kind of summed it up in some ways. But if you had to like just sum that up in like maybe a few words or a sentence, what does that look like for you? And success is different for everyone. You know, success for certain people could be having a billion dollars, driving a Lamborghini, like having your high rise, just, you know, all of that. Success for me is happiness, you know, true inner happiness and peace of mind. You know, to really truly have a peace of mind is you have to work very, very hard for that. You know, it's not easy, especially with we're in a whole pandemic right now, you know, to be able to accomplish businesses and to pull through during a pandemic especially being at the age that I'm at and the entire, I worked four jobs before the pandemic broke out, but I took the entire risk of not going back to work and focusing on my mission. You know, success for me is just knowing that I'm changing the lives of others around me, knowing that I'm making that impact and I'm empowering those to, you know, not give up because a lot of people give up. A lot of people don't feel like they're capable of doing things that, you know, these millionaires and things are like, oh no, I can never be like that. Why not? Like we all have it in us. We all have the networks in us. We all have the drive. All we have to do is just execute and remain consistent and like really believe in ourselves, you know, because that's where a lot of people lack is that belief. So success for me is literally just happiness, overall happiness. And without peace of mind, I couldn't be happy, you know. So that's why I just dive in deep and making sure that I remain sane. And I focus so much on the mental health aspect of things within the organization, because before girls even try to get into the whole social media management and you know, the whole website building and LLCs and all of that, I'm like, how confident are you within yourself? Because if you're not confident within yourself, you're not confident within your business. Therefore, your business will fall before anything. And you yourself will fall with that business. So if you're not at a place where you're at peace of mind and you're at sanity, you know, it's not even possible. So I, I definitely agree. define success as peace of mind. I've had all the money in the world. I've seen it. That's nothing when it comes to success. You know, I've seen the highest of the high and the lowest of the lows and money does not define happiness. And, you know, that's why I preach my message to continue to inform women. Don't chase the money. The money will chase you as long as you're chasing your mission. Ah, she keeps giving me chills yes. today. This is so, so good. good. <laughs> Chris is back here because I. this is like so much of what I talk about mm. all the time. And you have such a powerful story because you've been on the other side of that and you know the thing is, just today I put a post up and I was talking about, you know, I talk about this all the time because I had this epiphany moment where I realized in my life that everything I was doing was about chasing crisis and chasing goals. I went from one to the other. So if I wasn't in the middle of chasing a crisis, I'd chase a goal, right? And as soon as the goal was over, I'd be excited. And then I'd be let down again and miserable again because my mental health wasn't clearly straight. And then guess what happened? A crisis would happen. Then I'd get out of that and start this pattern all over. Can you resonate with that? Do you know what I'm talking yep. about? It's an awful life and no amount of money. It does not matter how much money you have because that cycle can happen for anybody regardless of money. And it's mm-hmm. not until you figure out how to master the headspace that you can get past that. Mm. Exactly. It's so good. It's so good. You've said so many amazing things. We could be here for like ever. (laughs) Yeah, no. And, and, you know, I tell people all the time when when we're coaching, you know, it's like we say they try to separate personal and business. They're like, oh, no, no, no. You have to keep your personal life and your business life separate. And I'm like, that is malarkey. Malarkey, everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can't. You can't separate it. They they hand they go hand in hand. And if your personal life is a mess, your business life is going to be a mess. Your career is going to be a mess. Your focus, your clarity, everything's going to be a mess. So it's so it's so critical to button up and and clean up the the mess so that you yeah. can operate at your highest level. Absolutely. And that's a major part that you just said right there, because, you know, when I started Modest Muse, you know, modest meaning, you know, how you carry yourself and Muse being inspiration and things like that. I was not at my best. You know, I was definitely going through mental health things and things like that, that I needed to heal. And I was like, Tiff, if you're going to be out here empowering women, you have to be the walking example. And that's right there, how you mix the business with the personal, because if you want people to take your business seriously, they're going to have to take you seriously. Therefore, Amen. you have to be the message that you're preaching. 
100%. Awesome. Well, I have a question for you. Uh, one of the things at Starter Girls that we um, we love to showcase is stories like yours where we you know, can highlight how ordinary people can live extraordinary lives and do extraordinary things, especially or when they make a choice to make an extraordinary decision, right? So for you, can you pinpoint or identify, you know, one let's call it an extraordinary decision that you made that that made that shift that shifted that trajectory for you to to bring you to where you are right now today does that make sense you know it's yeah, like because it, it it's like sometimes the there's like that one thing it, it's like that that thing that happens where it's either a light bulb or it's an aha moment or whatever that is but it's a choice we all have the ability to make to rise up right so w yeah. what can you identify one that was really uh, important for you Yes, actually, that kind of hits it in the butt because Modest Muse would have never happened if I never left my engagement. Um, it, you know, when you have the life and it looks beautiful from the outside looking in, you know, a lot of people stay. A lot of people, you know, who are normally engaged or married to someone of that, you know, status normally would just write it out. Me, um, I chose to leave. And mind you, a little bit more about my background is my parents are from Guyana, South America. I'm actually first born, um, you know, U.S. citizen um, from New York. And, you know, when they came out here, they had me at a very, very young age, like 15 years old, 15, 16. And just the choice to have me, you know, was an extraordinary choice. But my choice was, Tiff, you could stay in this or you could leave this. Um, you could stay and you could just continue to never have a name for yourself or you could leave and see what God is going to bless you with. I literally left with one little suitcase, left all of my designer, everything that I've ever owned behind and just left with like faith and left with, you know what, no matter what, I'm going to make something of myself. When I moved to Dallas, I didn't know anyone. That's why when I launched my organization and saw like over a hundred women show up, I was like, wow, like this is really possible. Like this is really a thing. So, you know, I always tell people a relationship money is never worth it. If you feel like you're fighting too much or you feel like you're in a battle with yourself, it's a battle for you to get out. Um, my extraordinary choice that I made was leaving um, and knowing that, you know, I knew that there was more out there for me. I would have never had this voice. I would have never had my story. You know, but now I can speak to women of like literally having a little suitcase and coming to Dallas with nothing but a dream and making all of my dreams come true. You know, I could have just sat in there. So my choice was to leave and to then empower, inspire and use my story to like impact others. Because, you know, a lot of people could also be very quiet about their story. Me, I share my story to inspire others because I know there's so many other women out there that are battling the same things that I've battled, whether it's mental health, depression, anxiety, like, you know, family trauma, generational curses, things like that. Like, my extraordinary choice was saying, I'm going to talk about this and I'm going to make something out of my story, you know, because a story is a story for a reason. So, so that, good. that definitely was my choice. Awesome. Thank, awesome. And thank you for being, I guess, I want to say vulnerable about that. I, I just, wow. <laughs> yeah. So good. So good. All right. So we're going to switch gears for a minute. Anya, this has been so good. Like there's so much information. I think we could be here for like a while. I really do. But we're going to switch gears on you just a little bit. Ask some fun questions. Not so serious. You'll probably like these. So I call these the rapid fire. And this, I always do these because I feel like they sort of kind of humanize our guests a little bit. And just, I feel like people can relate to people when we do this to our, to our guests. So we're going to start out really quick, Tiffany. Are you a morning or a night person? Night. Night. Definitely night. N definitely night. Awesome. Are you a night person, Brianna? No. No, that's no. why you're not. Why am I even asking you that? I already know this yes, answer. Yes, come on. I forgot. I, I messaged her early in the morning. I'm like, okay, I'm having a moment today. Cle clearly, I didn't have enough of caffeine or something today. Hello. All right. <laughs> Tiffany, cat or dog person? Dog. I Yeah, definitely dog. And do you have a dog? No. I plan on it eventually. But I if I do have that. a dog, it has to be like this small because I'm very weird about like bigger dogs than this. You want to be able to carry it in a bag, right? So you can, yes, like, you I know, put it. I that I could carry in my purse. There you go. So. You could just be, like, you have it in your bag with you. <laughs> this is too funny. That's great. Yeah. If you had a dog, what would it look like? Exactly. We always have to ask that question. I love it because they're like, they're like, dog. I'm like, do you have one? So, funny question. <laughs> All right. What is your favorite food? 
Oh, Caribbean food. So I like, you know, my family being from Guyana, South America, I love Guyanese traditional like mm. food. Like we eat curry and roti. Um, what is it? Dal curry. We eat oxtail and peas and rice. Um, <laughs> bacon, salt fish. It's just so many dishes that we make within my culture that I just, I'm head over heels for. Like, I will never exchange it for anything else. I love Caribbean Sounds dishes. Sounds good. Yeah. I've ne- I don't know that I've had any of this, but you said the bacon word, so I'm pretty excited right now. <laughs> have you found Have you found that in Dallas? Because you know, Dallas does have a ton of restaurants. So have you found anything close to what you enjoy? As so as what's Caribbean? funny is there's a um, Trinidadian place called Caribbean Cabana. But my cousin and I were actually speaking a couple weeks ago and, you know, she's actually the Dallas Morning News anchor. And she was like, Tiff, we have so much like, you know, we have so much people looking at us like they could literally fall into the Caribbean lifestyle like they would love it. So we plan on opening a like Caribbean restaurant probably within the next like two to three years being in Dallas because there isn't a lot to choose from. Especially Guyanese. Um, you get Jamaican all the time. You get Trinidadian all the time. But you never get Guyanese dishes. And we differ because, you know, even for our Christmas culture, we have, like, pepper pot. And we have just ackee and salt. Things that most people don't, like, have no idea about. So I could say Caribbean Cabana. But other than that, I plan on opening our own one day. I have no doubt about that. I totally have no doubt about that. All right. Last fun question I want to ask you really quick. If you could be any superhero or character for a day, what would you pick? I would be Invisible Woman. Mm. Like, I just feel like it would be so interesting, like, to just see people's point of views without them seeing me. Right. You like, could just to be just like hear a... what's going Yeah, sneak in, sneak out, like, just do your own thing, arrive wherever you want to be and not be seen. Because, you know, that's one thing with the with society now. Everybody wants to be seen. Me, mm-hmm. I'd rather really not be seen. Like, I'd rather my voice be heard. So I would definitely choose Invisible Woman because she has a lot of power without being seen. I so love that. That's cool. That's different. I so love that. All right. Well, you have been amazing, Tiffany. I do want to ask you really quick to tell us about this taste of Gaia really quick because I do want to let our audience know what this is because you are, this isn't here in Dallas. So tell us what this is real quick. Yeah. So I strive for the health is wealth um, perspective on things and just like, you know, allowing people to heal themselves because a lot, a lot of the healing comes from what we eat. A lot of the healing comes from just, you know, what we're taking in because it starts with your gut mental health starts with your gut. And I have like some doctors on my team too, who really specialize in that. But um, Taste the Gaia is a pressed juices, meal preps, all things health as well. We even serve like protein pancakes and protein waffles. Um, I'm actually invested in it with two other of my business partners. And we have protein shakes. We have literally all things just to help build our immunities, like build our nutrition. Cause that's something that I've always been into as well is nutrition. Um, you know, what you're putting in your body counts. So I wanted to develop something different in Dallas because, you know, they always say um, it, everything's bigger and thicker in Texas. But I'm like, look, we could be a lot bigger and thicker in Texas, but we have to make sure that we're just taking care of ourselves because we're also, with the pandemic going on and COVID going on, we need to make sure that we're putting the right nutrients in our bodies to make sure that, you know, we're able to live a long-lasting life because that's kind of the issue that we have right now. It's not really just COVID that's killing people. It's literally... You know, the things that we're eating and what we're consuming, the mental health disorders and stuff. So I always wanted to create a juicing environment. There's no sugars added in our juices um, and just it's fresh juices. So yeah, that's where it. that is located in the middle of downtown Dallas. So, you know, anybody could literally just DM the page and just let us know whatever it is you're seeking and we'll find a way. Like a lot of people come in for fresh orange juice. We'll squeeze the orange juice right there for you. And, you know, we're just trying to help the community just bring awareness to eating healthier. I think we need to go check it out. I know. Let's go. We need to go check it out. You said no no sugar, so you've already got me as a fan. So you're like speaking. You've been speaking my language. I knew when I met her. I'm like, I like this girl. Can't can't wait to get together. (laughs) Tiffany was sent was sent over to me by my good friend Kaylee, whom of which I love. And like, I don't you know, like when people I have certain people that refer people to me. And I'm just like, I just when they send me people, I'm like, I know I'm already going to like them. So. It's yes, been awesome. Kaylee's amazing. She I is. love her. She so. is. So, Tiffany, if our guests wanted to learn a little bit more about Modest Muse and what you have going on, where would you like us to send them? 
Well, you can either follow me on my personal page at Tiffany Sharonda, or you could also follow us at Modest Muse Org. We also have our website up as well. So you can learn more about, you know, the charity and things that we do, because we do a lot of homeless giveaways. Um, we do literally every month we go out into the community and actually give back. Like we did a, ja a jacket and blanket drive last week. Then we did a food pantry drive, like maybe the month before that. And literally at least two to three times a month we're going out. So you can also find us at www.modestmuseorg.com. And, you know, I am starting now to finally be open and start speaking and, you know, um, doing a little bit more motivational speaking. So, you know, you can find follow me on my journey of just health as wealth and just inspiring, empowering and trying to build a stronger community. Because like I said, we're stronger together and we have to rebuild ourselves from the inside out. So. 100%. 100%. Do you want to awesome. add anything to that? It's been amazing. Man, I'm just, <laughs> thank you for coming on the show today. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your story. And we're so, we're so excited for others to, um, to learn more about Modest Muse and you. And also, gosh, when you get back into town, we all need to, we need to go check out Taste of Gaia. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. This has been awesome. Thank you. You're a beautiful person. I love what you're doing. So, I do want to say to our guest, of course, if you love our podcast, please be sure to give us a rating on iTunes and check us out. We're also on iHeart and Amazon and hit that subscribe button on the YouTube. I always like to do that part, right? <laughs> and with that, we do want to leave you guys with a couple final thoughts. Tiffany, I think you're going to like this one. If you don't design your own life plan, chances are you fall into someone else's plan. And guess what they have planned for you? Not much. That's by Jim Rome. <laughs> and I with love that, it. Isn't that funny? I love that one too. And with that, I do want to say to you, in order to have success, you must start, right? And that start yeah. begins with a decision. Yeah. All right, you guys take care, be safe, and be kind to one another. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay.